want you to go into Galatians chapter um, 5, verse 1. And we're going to look at that, and we're also going to look at the Second Thessalonians. And down through the ages, even from the beginning of the gospel of Christ, there's always been a move of hell to stop people from hearing the truth and to cause a weakness into those that have been called by God out of darkness into his marvelous light. And Satan does whatever he has to do to cause a weakness inside the saints of God so that they won't stand fast, they won't stand strong in the place where Christ is made for them. And it says it like this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Bondage, the yoke of bondage only does one thing. It only makes you weak. It only brings you down to a standard where Satan knows he can take you at will at any time. Sometimes I believe that for the most part he keeps, he allows the church of Jesus to, to, um, exist on a level where it looks like it's doing okay, but it's not doing okay. It's kind of like our, the United States debt. Even though it's getting bigger, everybody's living okay, everybody's doing okay for the most part, everybody is operating okay. They got the, the money coming in, the jobs are out there, they're doing okay, but really, they're not doing okay. And Satan does this in the body of Christ. He allows it to stay on a platform where it looks like it's all right, but it's really not all right. It's really not all right. If any of us can stand here today or sit here today and say this, everything is fine in the U.S. of A. We are totally deceived. We are like a people knowing this that the day is coming that the bank is going to call our loan due and we will not have money. No one, unless an angel comes, unless an angel comes and comes to the United States of America and not only us, but Greece and Italy and all the others, unless an angel comes and gives them money, the, when the banker calls, there is going to be no money. And we know that that's not a good day when that happens. Amen? If anybody has ever gone through bankruptcy, and a lot of people haven't, but anyone that has knows that that's a bad day. That's a day when you need to go home, and that night you need to either take Christ or a sleeping pill, or you'll find no rest. Amen? I remember having a dream one night, not a dream, but uh, a phone call one night before I went to bed, and they let me know that my semi had turned upside down in, um, I believe it was in Tennessee, and we had a full load of cherries on in those little glass bottles, and there was just racks of them, pallets of them, and they were all over the highway. And, and the state cop said, what do you want me to do? Your truck is upside down also. When I came up, it was still running on its side. And I knew that everything was trashed. The load is everywhere. And I said, well, call a wrecker outfit and clean it up. And I hung up the phone, and I sat on the edge of the bed and said, this is not my truck. This is your truck, God. This is not mine. It's yours. My life is yours. This truck is yours. And you got to take care of it. And there was a piece that came over me and I laid down and went to sleep. That's how our life has to be. That's why we go through things in our life that we'd be able to come to the realization that this is God's life and it's not my life. It's no longer us but it's Christ. Amen? Amen. And uh, I had enough of those things that happened to me that God weathered me into a place where he wanted me to be in him. Amen? He weathered me into a place where I need to reside. Now, I can pull you along 
if I have to. I got room on my back because Christ has made me strong. If you want to get on my spiritual back, come on. Let's go. Let's do something for God. Amen? Amen. We can do it. We can do it together. We can stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. Amen? Amen? Parents do that to their children. I, as an overseer over you, can pull you along too. But you got to listen to me. Amen? And you got to be, be able and willing to jump on the bandwagon and let's go. Amen? Let's go. Let's remain free in Christ. That's being instant in prayer and out of prayer. In season and out of season. Amen? Stand fast. Paul said to the Galatians, you did run well. Who hindered you that you should not obey the truth? Who hindered you that you should not obey the truth? Who did this thing? This persecution come not of him that called you. He said, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. A little leaven in a bread, in bread, a little teaspoon in a big loaf, leavens it all, causes it to rise. And once it's rise, once it is risen, you put it in the oven. You know why? Because I've made bread, and I know how. Amen? I did it for my kids. And, I, and I'll tell you what, you get a toasted cheese sandwich made out of real bread. It's really good. But you put it in, and you, 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 you wait for the, the leaven to take hold and rise up. And this is what Satan does. He puts in a little, and he just waits. He's got time on his side. He just waits. He waits for the bread to rise, the sin to rise. And then what happens, he goes in and puts you in the oven. Bakes you out. Finishes the process. He knows it has to rise to a certain point to get you in a place where you're not standing fast in the liberty of God. It means standing strong. That you've caused a weakness to come in. Now, we want to stand strong, and we can stand strong in Christ. Amen? And you might be sitting here today and saying, I do stand strong. I believe there is things coming into the world, because the Bible says so. Are they in our lifetime? I am totally convinced, yes. Because I see what's going on through the world. And I see what's going on over in other countries. How, how they've grown and grown and grown, but not by honest efforts. And I believe the whole thing's coming down to throw a person into bondage. And let me ask you something. What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world, but he lost his soul? What's the profit if you go along with the system and you gain but you lose your soul and the whole thing. Oh, pastor, will it come to that? It has come to that. Because that's where it's going. Either you pay your allegiance to the world or you pay it to God. Either you give your heart to the world or you give it to God. Either you believe what the Bible says and stay strong in Christ or give it on over to the world. See, there's two things happening here. In Galatians, Paul says, who hindered you? What did they do? And it was another religion that came in and told him, yes, it's Jesus, but it's also to be circumcised too. And Paul told him this. He says, and this is for those that say you can't fall from grace. He says, you have fallen from grace. What's the grace? He says, where Christ now profits you nothing. Because now it's something else plus Jesus. And Satan doesn't matter. He doesn't care what that something else is in your life. He just wants it to be something else. It can be circumcision. It can be your religion of your past. He doesn't care. Just so it's something else. You can't sit at both tables. The table of Satan and the table of God. He doesn't care. It wasn't just for circumcision that they had fallen from grace. It was just something else going on in their life. And there's something else going on in the world right now. And what I'm saying is don't be sucked into it. Know who you are in Christ and 
Make yourself strong. Don't say today I won't pray. Say today I will pray. Today I will be strong. Because I know it's coming. Because Jesus has told me in the Bible. He said the last days knowledge will increase. Knowledge will increase. It took, it took a millennium for knowledge to increase one time. And now it's increasing every few months. Every three months. It's increasing. Doubling. Constantly. You did run well. Who hindered you? Satan's out to hinder. And he always flashes the money. How are you going to survive? Survival. He flashes that before you. Survival. Don't think of anything else. Don't, be, don't believe anything else other than you'll be okay. You don't have to worry about anything. Not to hear to say that you got to worry. But you must make yourself ready. Stand fast in the truth. And make sure you're not standing fast in something else that is not true. Finding your comfort in something else not true. Because... The love of money or the love of something else other than Christ is the root of all evil. That's why Satan puts a bit of leaven in the lump. He puts a bit of leaven in the lump so it just grows. It just grows a little at a time, little at a time, little at a time. Each one of us have to look at that in our life and make sure that's not going on. Uh, let's, let's go on over here to Thessalonians. <clears throat> you know, why we go to Thessalonians? Well, it's, this is the reason why. Because Satan, from the beginning of time, in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, perverted the word of God. He perverted it. He said in the last days, there'll be teachers that pervert the word of God. Did he not pervert it? to the only woman that was around, to the only man that was around. Did he not take that couple and cause her life to be turned upside down? Who are we today to say that Satan is unable to move us or turn our life up and upside down when we know that we're supposed to know the truth? And we do know the truth. And she says it's not true. She says, God said, the day we eat that, we shall surely die. Oh, that's not true. Isn't that what Satan did? Does he not do the same thing? Does he not put that feeling? Oh, that's not true. That's not true. Things will always be okay. Things will, I know what you see. I know what you know. But it'll be okay. The banker will never call. He's going to call. He's going to call. He is going to call. He will call. What are you supposed to do? Take up arms in Christ now. And I don't mean rifles. Take up Christ like never before in your life. That's why God gives us the ability to see far off and gives, give us wisdom that we can see what's happening. Well, Pastor, you sound like it's going to happen tomorrow. Good. It really could. We were really close. Now we got another couple months, three months out in front of us. Could it happen then? Because we know when it happens, if they, they don't renew the debt, if the banker doesn't come in and say, we'll extend it, we know. But my point is today, whether they extend it or not, this, the debt ceiling, my thing is today, let's know the word. Let's be ready. You know, there's a lot of people getting ready and they're, they're storing food, which I don't think is a bad deal, but they're storing food and they're storing ammo and guns and everything. Are you really? Is, are we really going to fight like that and not have Christ with us? Are we going to try to fight like that? Is that what Jesus said to take up arms? Did Jesus say, lay down and act like you're dead? If we are to win, we have to have Jesus in the right place, totally sold out. We need God. And I believe this. We will win. I believe this. 
that the word of God says it won't. It won't go like we hope it would go. What's our hope? That everything would remain okay. We know that things are going to go the other way. That we will have to take a mark. But we can't take a mark. You know what's being preached out there now? Talking to man just the other day. That's being preached. That if you take the mark and, you don't, and you're just stupid. You just take it. That you won't lose your soul. That God will forgive you. Really? Really? And I says, but doesn't it say if you take the mark? All who take the mark. Isn't that what it says? There's a lot of things being preached. Who stole your freedom? That's what you need to ask the people. You were doing so well, but what happened? Another thing that this person believes is that you can just walk and not lose your salvation. Really? Really? You can sit at the t table of darkness and the table of God. And God will just sweep you off to heaven. Really? Doesn't that sound like darkness being preached? People being taken over? How could I preach anything else today if that is going on? How can I preach anything else other than stand fast in the freedom? The freedom is understanding what the truth is. That's the freedom. That you're free. That a place is reserved in heaven. Well done, good and faithful servant. A place is reserved in heaven for you. Not that your, your, your name is blotted out of the book of life. But it remains there. And it remains shiny and strong. And when God opens up the book to find your name. It hits him. Glory of God hits him and says. That's my son. That's my daughter. I will confess them Jesus says. Before my father and all his angels. This one's mine. That's what I preach today. That God would declare you his. Amen. And that you'd not be deceived. Amen. And not go with the others. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. That that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first. This is, this is already happening. And that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. It's going to happen. Who could ever think this? And let me ask you this. And we've seen this go on. Who could have ever have thought this? That a community organizer that was not into anything for two years has gone to Washington and slapped the GOP and everybody in line. You hearing me? Who could have ever thought that this man could do such things as he does out there and plays the hardball that he plays and wins every time. Is this man the man of perdition? I don't believe so, but I know that he is Antichrist, and Antichrist has already been in the land since the beginning of this gospel, John said. How could deception come over the land? How could a strong hand be? Satan's got a plan and he's working it out. He's got a plan and he's working it out. What man could there be before the election was could look at the president of Russia and say these words, when I get reelected, I'll talk to you. And where he got reelected and totally amazed us. Because we were being fed. Romney had a good chance. According to the polls and that. Or according to the election. He was out. Big time. Oh they. They. Uh, messed up the. The votes and. I don't care what they did. This guy knew. This guy knew. When I get reelected. How could anything have such persuasion? How could anything have such, I know, this is the way we're going. How could anything have such power just to hold strong and get everything that they want out there, and it's not good? I was actually relieved when I heard that they extended the debt ceiling. I actually was, because I don't want to deal with the storm that's going to create.
it is going to create. I was glad. If I thought we could go through a bankruptcy in the United States and that everything would be okay and that it all work out and that we would just be forgiven, I would go for it. But I know what it's going to cause. It's going to cause chaos and it's going to cause loss of jobs. Those that love money that they work so hard and they work night and day for it, it's going to be lost. Their 401ks are going to be lost overnight. And they all know this. And it's going to cause the Asian markets and Europe and all that, they're going to, it's going to cause them just to fall to the ground. People are going to lose everything uh, worldwide. It's going to be crushed, crushed when this happens. They just held it off. Are you ready to stand with Jesus? Have you made yourself strong? Do you stand fast in the truth? A community organizer. He did absolutely nothing. He had zero experience and became president of the United States. And nobody knew him. Nobody touches him. Can't touch him. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that kind of amaze you? Let no man deceive you. Well, the Lord is surely with him. I think not when you talk against the Beatitudes of Jesus and mock him. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to vote different next time. Will you? Will you? Will it make a difference? I think this, that what we need to do is scan our life and say, do I really stand strong with Jesus? And am I standing strong right now that when it is needed, if needed, if even needed, that God would want to use me, that I am ready to be used. I stand at your attention, whatever that may be, God. I think it'll be the greatest outpouring at the time of the Holy Spirit. I really do. I think it'll be the greatest outpouring, but people will be rattled. See, that's when people do the best, when people are rattled. They start looking outside the box. Say, this is how I've always done it, and if things aren't very good right now, I got told today, we don't need you anymore. Oh. Well, what am I going to do? You be strong now. Be strong now. Let me read on. There come a falling away first that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, or that he as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things because they thought the resurrection had already happened. Paul says, no, you're going to see this. You're going to see this guy sitting in the temple. Christian, you're going to see this guy sitting in the temple. You're not raptured out of here. You're seeing it. And that's the last three and a half years. You're seeing it. So there's a scripture you can use on why we're not getting out of here before it happens. All right. And now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The thing that is stopping this son of perdition to be revealed. It's going to, he's here. It's going to be removed. And you're going to see. See, God is in control of all this, but his, his strong hand is going to be removed and he's going to let him go for it. Are you ready? I pray this. I pray that God's hand would keep him and let me get a little bit stronger for the storm. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord, when he comes back, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. But until then, he is going to be revealed. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. You see what, what I said? What's going on? How could, this, how could this happen to the United States? Whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power... A strong hand. What's all power? All power is having your way. Getting people to go your way. 
holding out and getting the victory. That's what's going on out in Washington right now. And it's not a good victory, but it is a victory with all power, all persuasion. And signs and lying wonders. Well, don't say, well, surely this must be God because look what's going on. <laughs> and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness with them that perish, because they receive the not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, because they didn't receive Christ and they didn't want Christ, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be, I don't want to receive a lie. I want to see the truth and I want to stand fast in the truth. Who has done this to you? Don't let God ask us this. Who's done this to you? You did run so well. You did run so well. But the whole, in 1 Timothy 4, uh, uh, 1, it says, But the Holy Spirit speak, speaks expressingly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And I'll tell you what, that's here. That's going on. And I, but I want to say this, that no matter what's going on in, in your life right now, turn to Christ if you haven't turned to him. Turn to the truth. Say, well, what's the truth? Love God with all your heart. Love God with all your heart. Turn to Jesus. Turn to him. And say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. We, we had a, a, a program, a, a preaching here a couple weeks ago on total repentance. Repentance is being really sorry for your sins. And turn it away. If you're a drunk, turn away from the drinking. And be sorry that you ever got drunk the first time. Amen.